ladies, we um, wear a lot of masks. I mean, no matter what, we get up in the morning, we put on our mask so that we can present ourselves to the world one way when we know inside we feel some, some kind of way. What I want to encourage you to do, ladies, is remove the mask. Um, keep it real with our young ladies. Wrap our arms around them, share our life experiences with them, and let them know how we got to the point where we are right now. And until we do that, nothing's going to change. They need to know that somebody has been where they are because they feel lonely, because they feel like they're the only one out there, because they feel like um, nobody understands me. How do they know if unless we tell them? We have to be honest. We have to be open. We have to be transparent with our young ladies, um, mothers, aunties, grandmothers. We have to do, these, do this for our young ladies. We have to take our mask off. We have to let them know who we really are. We have to let them know what we've been through because they're questioning themselves. They're questioning their identities. They're questioning their self-worth. They're questioning their value. And your experiences might be the very answer to one of their questions. And it just might save their lives. So we have to share our, our experiences with our younger generation so that they'll know that we're, we're touchable, we're tangible, they can come to us and they can share. And when we share it with them, we have to make sure that we share it with an open heart, with a clean heart, and not let me find out what they're doing so you can go back and tell your older girlfriends what's going on and um, gossip about the girls or even mimic it because I've seen older women in their 50s mimicking their daughters. Now, who, who's the chief in charge? Is it the daughter or is it the mother? I've seen them. And like I said last week when me and Kim were here, beating their daughters to the tattoo parlor. Yes, I have tattoos. Yes, I love tattoos. Yes, I will get more. So I'm putting it out there. But I'm not beating my daughters to the tattoo parlor. I mean, that's just me. That's just what I like. I'm keeping it real. Yes, I like piercings. Yes, I like tattoos. I don't put you down for your piercings or tattoos. But it's a way that we should do it as older women to keep it classy. Let's just say that. Keep it classy. I mean, we have to teach classiness to our daughters. And they, if we don't know as older women, we can Google it. They have Google out there. Google classy and see what it's supposed to look like. It's not supposed to look like... Um, <laughs> Mama D. It's not supposed to look like that. It's not supposed. I mean, she in the chair dancing with some portholes on, but she getting her getting her boogie on. Come on, baby. Come on, get real with that. You are somebody's grandmother. Oh well, this is keeping it real. You are somebody's grandmother. I am somebody's grandmother. Yes, I love to dance. Yes, I love to party. Yes, I love to have a good time. But there is a way to do it. You can change your turn up, like I said last week, to a different type of turn up. And we don't have to be out there with our mini skirts on. And we don't have to be out there with skirts all the way down to our knees either. Because I don't like that myself. I don't like stockings. I don't do all that stuff. But I like to party in a classy way. And we should show our daughters how to do that. So that they can show their daughters how to do it. So that they won't be out of control. I mean, share your get down with your girls. I share my get down with my girls. I tell my girls everything about me. I put it on the table. And yes, it hurts. Yes, I was embarrassed. I mean, they even laughed. One of my daughters, my oldest daughter, was like, oh, mama, you was a hoochie. Okay, yeah, I was. And uh, I am me now. So, but my daughters know. Nobody can come to them and say, your mama was a hoochie. They're like, yeah, okay, and? So they already know what mama was. They know where mama's come from. They know what mama is now and who mommy is now. So every time I evolve, I open up that tank to my girls. I let them know who I am because I know where God is taking me. I'm going to have to be transparent. And I don't want my daughters to be shocked. I don't want them to be embarrassed or hurt or, like, mad because it's something about me that I did not share with my daughters. And one other thing is we have to listen to our children. Our children are crying out for help. Our children are crying out for attention. Our children are crying out for guidance. They're crying out for discipline. Believe it or not, my four-year-old son fuss every time I tell him no, he get an attitude, oh, well, so what? He needs to be disciplined. Because if I don't discipline him, the LAPD will discipline him, and they discipline will possibly end up in death, and that's not going to happen. So I have to be a parent. I have to stand up, and I have to take care of 
whatever his needs are. I have to tell him no. I have to get with him with the tap tap. Yes, I do. And I said it. I get with him with the tap tap. So it is what it is. It's better for him to be disciplined by his parents than by the uh, to people in the streets. Because I discipline with love. They discipline out of hate. They discipline out of their hurt. They discipline out of their ignorance to who we are. They discipline out of their fear to who we are. We as a people are feared, God. And we don't even see our strength because we're too, we're too busy hiding behind our mask. So, ladies, I, I'm, I'm trying to really, really get this point across. Take your mask off. Get you a group of girls. First of all, no, let me go back. Uh -uh. Take your mask off and deal with the woman behind the mask. Deal with her first. Deal with her foremost. And then when you are ready, find you a mentor. Somebody that can mentor you with all the things that you have to deal with. And then move forward with helping our young ladies. Because they're waiting on us. They're dying waiting on us. Literally, people. They're dying waiting on us. How many people's lives can you save by telling your story? How many young ladies can you save from going down the same road that you went down, if not stopping them from going down it, but stop them from going down it as hard as you went down it? How many young ladies can you save by telling your story? How many young ladies can you save by taking your mask off? That's my question to you today. That's my challenge to you today. Ladies, how many young ladies can you help by removing your mask? First of all, going and finding help for yourself. Second of all, by helping our young ladies. And one thing that I've learned too, just because you are over a certain age does not make you wise. Let me say that. I know some 60-year-olds who spit nothing but words and they think they wise. I know some 50-year-olds who spit nothing but words and think they wise. I know some teenagers who have wisdom out of this world. Some young people that have wisdom out of this world. We have something to teach each other. We have something to something of value to place in each other. So we have to go back to the old family, <coughs> family value ways, like um, James and uh, um, what's her name? Oh my God, I can't think of it. my favorite show, Good Times. So we have to go back to those ways. We have to go back to teaching our children how to respect themselves first, how to respect each other. And then how to move forward in good friendships and sisterhood. That was our that's our whole topic today is sisterhood. So I'm speaking to the women. We have to deposit our true selves into our daughters. Because if we don't, somebody else will. We'll see our daughters out there on Century. We'll see our daughters out there on Long Beach Boulevard because they're looking for the love that we should have and could have given them as mothers okay daddy's not there okay daddy's not there you knew way before daddy left that it was a possibility that daddy was not going to be there put your big girl panties on and do what you have to do raise your daughters don't i don't i i don't like the excuse oh i was young when i had my kids i have to live my life baby you you live in your life take care of your kids your life took a left turn and you still standing on right boulevard your life turned go with it go fix it you know, you have a chance. As long as you are breathing, you have a chance to fix the things that you have wronged and don't live in your past. That's what keeps us held down because, okay, I was out there. I did whatever I did, and we live in our past. Our past is the past. That's why it's called the past. Pick up the pieces, take the mask off, and go look for some help and get yourself together so that you can be of value to this next generation. So that's been my, my major pet peeve for today is for us women to get up and do what we're supposed to do as women to each one teach one but I mean we, we teach it but we're not teaching the right things we're teaching our daughters how to give themselves away we're teaching our daughters how to hurt themselves I mean and hurt themselves in a way where they're not uh, hurting themselves like like physically causing blood and all that. Well, some of them are, but we as mothers need to stand up. We need. I do backpack checks. I do purse checks. I go see what's going on. My daughter's door is closed. That's my house. I open the door. Lock the door. Not in my house. My door can be locked because I'm the adult that pays the bills and I'm the mother. But not the kids' door. I mean, if they're getting dressed, whatever, okay, cool. But just to lock your door to kick it in your room, no, I'm coming in. 
I want to see what's going on. You going on a date? I'm checking your dress. I'm checking your bag. What you? Why you got a bag? What you need all that stuff for? Mothers, we need to get in our kids and our daughters' business. Because if we don't get in their business, trust me, somebody's in your baby's business. So I wanted to end that with you today. I want to let everybody know that sisterhood is possible. We at a band of sisters, women ministries, will dispel the myth that women cannot get along. So I want to thank you guys for spending your Saturday with me today. I appreciate you. Um, I love you all. And um, I will be with you next week. Next week will be my sixth anniversary, for, six month anniversary for keeping it real with Leisha. I mean, I made it six months, y'all. So we're going to have a special show next week. We'll have um, Georgia Horton come on, and she's going to interview me. And you got to be able to ask questions via Facebook, um, via Ustream, or you can call in next week at 323 380 and you could ask questions. We was gonna have a real fun time and we just gonna let it flow. So um, stay tuned for more information in regards to my first ministry event, November the 5th. So the um, title for the event is, um, oh my goodness, my brain is money. Y'all need to drink that coffee. The title for the event is, oh, oh gosh, what is it to me? I forgot. I forgot, but we're going to have a ministry event coming up November the 5th, and next week, I promise y'all, I'm going to be on target. I'm going to drink my coffee before I come, and I'm going to be ready to rock and roll, but my heart was heavy this morning with that lack of sisterhood, so it just really took me for a loop. I had my baby drive me in today. I didn't even drive my own car, so that just lets y'all know my heart was heavy this morning. I needed to sit back and get this thing off my head. It's off now. I'm done. I'm good. I love y'all. And ain't nothing you can do about it. And I'll see you next week.